do a bit of comedy, a little bit of marketing. You're all over TikTok. I'm a ADHD fueled millennial. How do you know if you're funny? Very good question. I don't. Clickbait or comedy with meaning. How's your Arabic? Adi. Adi. <laughs> I was bullied a lot as a kid. I saw a lot of unfairness around me. Be yourself. <laughs> what play others? <laughs> Mom, do not fight with them, it's okay. I remember not knowing the difference between who are you and how are you. So I kept asking everyone who they are every morning. <laughs> hey, by the way, this is my accent and my name is Denise and I have a job. The ability to make people laugh takes a lot of intelligence to be able to do that. When you get upset, you get in fights in the comments and that boosts my engagement and I make money off of it. I am always myself, but you have to understand that myself is also 20 different people. Don't be afraid to fail. Keep failing, actually. Fail over and over and over again. And then eventually you become kind of immune to it. Hi everyone and welcome to the Inside Track with me, Luca Alam. I am delighted to welcome a wonderful lady. Her name is Denise Alexe. She is fantastic. Don't whistle inside my house. Why? Because I will not have luck with money. You only have about five months left to live <gasps> with this condition. I, I think I have depression. What do you have to be depressed about? Look at your uh, neighbor, Vasily. He lost one leg. Happy International Daddy Day to all the sugar daddies. It's Father's Day. Yes, I would like to have your most expensive champagne and only one glass. All right, so. All right. So, I had the cheesy fries. What is that? Oh. Ibiza, lot. Ibiza. Best techno house. You Ibiza. Know. Ibiza. 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 What do you want? <laughs> <laughs> welcome, Denise. Thank you so much for that welcome. Uh, and all the compliments. <laughs> Appreciate it. Thank you. I'm for so happy me. to have you. So, am I pronouncing your name right? Is it Denise Alexe? Is that correct? Technically, it's Denisa, but everybody calls me Denise. Okay, so your friends call you Denise. Yes. Are we at that stage? Yeah. We could do that. Fantastic. <laughs> uh, so, Denise, tell me about yourself. What do you do for a living? Because you're, you've got a bit of everything going on, right? Mm -hmm. You do a bit of comedy, a mm -hmm. little bit of marketing. You're all over TikTok. So how would you describe yourself? A generalist. Okay. I like that um, saying of, what was it? A master, no, uh, a joke of all trades is a master of none. Correct. I don't believe in that. Okay. I do a little bit of everything. Uh, I'm a ADHD fueled millennial and Love I do it. a bit of everything. Uh, but just to kind of sum it down to two main things, it would be marketing and comedy. Nice. Yeah. So first question, how do you know if you're funny? Very good question. Yeah. Uh, I don't. Okay. I just roll with it. It's my defense mechanism. <laughs> <laughs> so sometimes I'm being like really mean and people yeah. think I'm joking and I'm like, ah, huh. Maybe that works. Maybe I should just be myself and be like, she's so funny. Yeah. But yeah, just miserable. So are you are you are you funny first and then marketing second, or or how does that work? I combined the both. Um, I would say, uh, I never had to think about that. Yeah, look, when when you do multiple things when you're yeah. jack of all trades, you got to think about actually. If someone asks you, what do you do for a living? It actually puts you on the spot, right? Mm -hmm. It's quite difficult to sort of nail that answer. What I do for a living is definitely marketing. That's what's paying my bills yeah. continuously. And it's uh, very passionate about my career. It's important to pay the bills. So yeah. That's good. Yeah. Uh, but then the passion project would be comedy. Okay. And it would be you know acting and, okay. and everything that I'm doing on the side. Okay. There's a lot to talk about with you. But first and foremost, I see you've brought uh, a very seasonal looking mug with you. Descri what's going on here? <laughs> we, we couldn't be further away from Christmas. <laughs> What's happening? What's happening? So um, you asked me to get a mug and I, I made this joke. I was like, I'm a millennial. Everything in my house is gray or pastel, you know? And I looked and I found this old raggedy looking mug. And it reminded me of my first Christmas away from my family when I was in university because I'm such a holiday person. And I found this little mug. I think it was like the the, the UAE version of the dollar store. Okay. Um, and I got in, I had the saddest We first had that in the UK, Christmas. the pound stretcher. So yeah, so you bought, yeah. This, you bought this in the UAE version. Okay. Yeah. And, and then... And it reminds you of home or what's the, what's it the remind? Yeah, it remind. I mean, I'm a big Christmas person. I'm a big family person. And I think I just needed a bit of color to not feel so sad about doing Christmas alone yeah. for the first time. And I've kept it like out of all the mugs that I've had. Um, this was the one that always stayed yeah. with Christmas me. Christmas is great, isn't it? I love Christmas. I wish Christmas could have them all the time. Uh, so talking about family. So wh where are you from? So without knowing too much, Alexei, mm -hmm. European, Eastern mm. European I'm going with. Yeah. Where are you from? Romanian. 
Romanian. So the last name would be a Romanian name. Okay. Um, but it could also be Russian. Okay. So my father is Russian. His name is Nikita. Love you, Dad. And uh, my mom is Romanian. Very nice. But I'm born and raised in Romania. And then the, the Gulf. That's so impress me. How many languages do you speak? I'm guessing quite a few. Four. Is but fluently two. Okay. Um, but I can communicate in four. Very nice. So mm -hmm. wh where do you identify most with? If someone asks you again, where are you from? Is Romanian first and foremost, or is it Russian, or you just kind of one of those Dubai people and you're not too sure where you're from anymore? <laughs> like, let's be honest. Yeah. Nobody really belongs here, but kind of everyone kind of belongs in yeah. Dubai. You know what I mean? I strongly identified uh, with my Romanian side for the longest time. And then it got to a point where I started getting in touch with my Russian roots. Um, so I feel like when I kind of say both sides, yeah. I'm just respecting both of those two different cultures that I grew up with. Okay. Um, but considering the fact that I lived in Romania most of the time, I would say I identify more as Romanian. So how long have you been living in Dubai then? 10 years now, okay. in Qatar before this for about six years. Oh, wow. Yeah. So how's your Arabic? Adi. Adi. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. Um, so look, before we get any further, usually with my show, I mm. always ask uh, my guests for a safe word. Yeah. Uh, it's there designed to protect the person coming on. Uh, I don't think you're going to have to use it, but mm. just in case, there might be some topics that you kind of want to avoid. They could be political, they could be non-political, whatever. Right. So uh, do you have a safe word in yes, mind? Yes, I do. Yeah? Toodles. Toodles? Toodles. Okay, as in <laughs> goodbye. Yeah, yeah toodles. Yeah, as in, nice. you know, instead of, no, I don't want to talk about that, toodles. Very good, okay. <laughs> so we'll go with toodles. Then. Yeah. Um, so quickly, off the bat, why do you do what you do? Do you have any idea at this stage? I mean, we're very early on th into the chat, but why did you get into marketing? Why did you get into comedy? Mm. What's the reason behind that? Um, comedy is a result <laughs> of, I, I don't want to say trauma because I didn't have such a traumatic childhood, okay. uh, but I did have a challenging childhood. So I would yeah. say it was my coping mechanism that eventually you know, ended up being put to good use. Uh, marketing came from my desired to be a journalist at a very young age. I think I was about, when I started learning how to read, yeah. we'd have the um, teletext, it was called in Romania, where yeah. you'd put like the news in text yeah. form, and I'd put like all the teddy bears in front of me, and I would read the news out to them. Wow, look at and that. that's nice. 20 years later, I, you know, I'm on you're radio. Still, you're and still doing yeah. it, or you stopped doing not, the teletext? Not with the teddy bears, okay. uh, but I just had a passion for, well, it was like my desire mainly for um, justice. Justice? Yeah. I Explain think, that. What does that mean? I why, think why justice? I was bullied a lot as a kid, and I and I just I saw a lot of unfairness around me. Um, I don't come from the most richest country. I don't come from like I come from a village, so I did see a lot of abuse and poverty and uh, just things that you shouldn't see as a child. Yeah. And I think I I felt so helpless that I couldn't do anything about it. And then I realized that if there's one thing that I could do is help other people's stories be heard and journalism was like that the way that i saw it at that time so can i ask about the bullying yeah you're talking physical bullying verbal yeah. bullying every both? every, oh, every wow. kind that you can imagine um these are other girls this is, these are boys as well so in romania i would say we didn't even have a bullying campaign it was kind of like ah oh, get over it it happens to all the kids yeah all the kids get made fun of so just yeah. to give you a little bit of context i've always had freckles um and Do it you? wasn't yeah, yeah okay I don't, I don't there. Uh, and it wasn't always <laughs> like a thing to it wasn't a beauty trend back mm. then it was actually something to kind of be made fun of you know mm. being ginger kid with like little harry potter glasses and i was a nerd mm. i was the kid that always had their hand up you know so some some people would say oh you were kind of like asking for it yeah you know you're so annoying how um, old how old were you at this stage seven eight that young yeah yeah. Okay. And I would just kind of make fun of like little things, but you know, teasing is teasing. And then we, we tend to downplay it so much. So in my mind as a kid and as a teenager, I'm like, ah, oh, it's just teasing. Yeah, yeah, he kicked me or he like pushed me or whatever yeah. and called me a nerd. Um, it's teasing. And then I went to high school in the GCC in Qatar. And that was the interesting part is because I was so proud of being this smart kid, the yeah. straight A student, and I get thrown into the, an American school and I didn't really speak English very well. I remember not knowing the difference between who are you and how are you. So I kept asking everyone who they are every morning. <laughs> <laughs> um, so you can imagine at the age of 15, I mean, kids are ruthless, man. Teenagers. They are vicious. Vicious. Ooh, I'm almost 30 and I'm scared of teenagers. Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. so you can imagine being a teenager in a new yeah. country, barely speaking the language, um, in a very 
culturally diverse environment, which was yeah. all very new to me. And uh, yeah, I got so why So why did you go to Qatar? This could just digressing a little bit, but why yeah. Qatar? It's a very strange... Very. You would think Romania to Qatar. It's not, it's not a very well-traveled route. So around 2004, when my mom left, um, I mean, Romania was in shambles, really, uh, post-communism. It was such a, such a difficult period. I think just now the country is slowly recovering. And there was a lot of corruption. There was a lot of um, economical issues. And what happened to my family's business um, got kind of caught up into that. And I don't remember it very well. I was quite young, but I remember the conversation being we've got debt and we've got this and like, we got to do something. And most Romanians would leave to like Europe, right? Yeah. European Union, because it was easy. My mom just kind of saw something like being a, a opportunities that she is. She got this uh, job offer in Qatar and she started working as a waitress. She went from being a business owner to a waitress. Um, all for us, all for the kids. You yeah. know, she's like my, my hero. And uh, a few years later, during this time, my parents split up, whatever. And um, my sister went to university. I have an older sister and during this time, I was kind of living alone with my sister. Yeah. My parents left abroad and they were working somewhere else. And it got to a point where my sister was going to university and I was going to be left alone, alone mm. at a very young age, at about 14, yeah. where my mom said, you can't do that. You need to choose. Do you want to go to your dad or you don't want to come with me to Qatar? Um, and I chose Qatar and it wasn't an easy it's transition. a lot of pressure to put on you at that age. Yeah. yeah. It's a lot of pressure. Yeah. And... Uh, I remember because I was like, oh, but I just got accepted to the best high school in like my region in Romania, which is, you know, it was still a countryside. My mom was like, yeah, that's nothing. Like, just go yeah. to an American high school. Like, I'll support you. And it wasn't easy. Yeah. The language barrier, me being yeah. used to being the best. Uh, yeah. We'll talk about overachievers later and how that is such a yeah. um, such a heavy thing for a child to carry, being an overachiever. And then I, and then I go to the school and I can't speak the language and I feel like I'm inferior to everybody else and it shows in like my demeanor I'm a bit weird I'm not very social and then I was easy to get picked on and it was in Qatar it was actually the girls that were picking on me um for multiple reasons and I've I had always heard schools. about this obviously not a girl myself but I've always heard girls mm -hmm. abusing other girls mm. whether verbally or physically so That's, mean yeah, yeah vicious um so when did comedy start coming into this was it, was it while you were still in Romania when you were getting bullied as a seven-year-old? Mm -hmm. Or was it a little bit later as you sort of moved to, to the Middle East? So it's always been there. I have a very funny family. My granddad, God rest his soul, uh, very funny man. Just made fun of, it. Like, he was ironic with life. You know, he had yeah. such a hard life. Yeah. Struggle. We're talking real struggle. And he always made fun of it. Yeah. And that was my, I kind of copied that and something would happen and I would just make a sarcastic joke and it yeah. just kind of made it easier. Yeah. So it really is a defense, me it's a coping mechanism rather. Yeah. And then I realized in school, uh, probably around fifth or sixth grade, when we we're like, what, 12, 13, weird age, yeah. um, I realized that if I deflect with humor to what the bullies were saying about me, because I wasn't the prettiest kid growing up. Uh, I was a late bloomer, so like I just I was skinny. I looked like a boy. I was teased about looking like a boy, and I realized that if I reply with humor or with self-deprecating humor, right? When I started making fun of myself, they weren't like it, I took the fun out of it. Yeah, it kind of numbs the pain. Yeah, they're like, right? oh, well, I don't want to bully you anymore yeah. if you're gonna agree with yeah. what I'm saying, yeah. you know? And I was like, ah, oh. then like a little click in my head. I was like, this okay, this is my weapon. Yeah, and it just came naturally for me. Very nice. Um, so if you were to go back in time mm -hmm. and, and you had those chance to speak to those bullies again, would you still go down the same route? Would you have changed anything? I wouldn't. I wouldn't change okay. anything. I wouldn't want to go back again because, oh, my God, what yeah. a, so much work, okay. you know. But, um, no, I wouldn't change okay. it. Okay. So then, okay, so you're in Qatar, mm -hmm. right? Your mom is, is, is traveled. She's flown. She's packed up her bags. Your dad's gone in a different, dif uh, different direction. It's just you and your sister. I'm guessing you're very close to your sister. Uh, that was in Romania. It was just the two of us. Oh, uh, so it was just you and your mom in Qatar? Yes. Okay. Yeah. So explain to me, talk to me a little about your relationship with your mom. How was that? Oh, she's the best, man. She's like my best friend. My mom's a very young mom. Okay. Um, she had us when she was quite young. And she is just this strong woman who never gives up. And I really, like, she tells us it's the reason the children was, like, the, the reason that I kept going and I kept going. Yeah. And, um... I don't want to get emotional because I love her so much and I don't want to get emotional when I talk about her. Um, she just believed in me. Yeah. She's like, whatever you want to do, just do it. And uh, I got a job when I was like working at the same time. I was trying to help her out because we weren't like doing the best financially and okay. especially like having a single mom in the GCC country. Like I had to go to a private school. Yeah. There were no public schools for English speakers and it wasn't easy. 
So you then moved to Dubai. And then I finished high school. I took about a year off. Um, I was going to go to university somewhere in Europe. For some reason, God had different plans for me. It just wouldn't work out. Okay. And I took a year off and then I got a scholarship from a university here. So I was like, you know what? I think the GCC, I traveled a bit and I was like, I still think the GCC is the best place for me. I yeah. felt the most welcomed here. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. So you then get into marketing. Yeah. Or does that come later? Uh, that's what I studied. I yeah. have a bachelor's degree in uh, mass communication, concentration yeah. in digital media, because it was all still going into the journalism, yeah, documentary, yeah. filmmaking that I that I wanted to do. Okay. Yeah. So how you ended now? You're working at Virtue Zone mm -hmm. at the moment, and you're are you the the, the, the marketing, marketing manager. yeah marketing manager there. Um, but you also you have a massive follower base on mm -hmm. TikTok. Right? Yes. You've got over half a million people that yeah. listen to your reels, etc. Talk to me about the TikTok mm -hmm. thing. How did that all develop? So random. So uh, before I started working with VirtuZone, I actually um, started my own little agency, freelancing and then turned it into an agency for a little bit. And I was learning along the way. And TikTok, um, this was early 2020 or late 2020 when TikTok was just kind of like yeah. gaining its, uh, um, its reputation and... At first, I was so anti TikTok. I was like, oh, I'm not gonna do these dances. I thought it was all about like. Did you do a dance? Never. You never did. No. We can find out, you know. No. My research team will mm -mm. spend hours trading through the footage of TikTok. You won't catch me doing okay. that. <laughs> uh, not that there's anything wrong with it. It just wasn't my persona. Okay. So I was like, what would I do on TikTok? And then I remember downloading it because I wanted to um, diversify my services and do TikTok ads for my clients. So I was like, how am I going to yeah. advertise that if I don't know the platform? So I was like, I started experimenting. I started making videos about healthy routine and cooking and videos of my cats and fitness and they flopped. And I have this internal joke. Um, I have these beautiful Lebanese girlfriends and we always make these like accent jokes, you know? Go on then. So I would do like, a, you, no, you, I, I don't do the Lebanese no, accent. No, no, you can't say you do accents. Then Other do than accent. like Adzi, that's the most Lebanese way <laughs> I'm gonna. <laughs> um, but they would do that and then I would do the Russian accent. We'd send each other voice notes and it was just like our own like insight joke. So I want to ask you about the Russian thing because mm -hmm. you do a lot of skits, mm -hmm. little kind of sketches in Russian. So What's the message? Are you trying to make fun are you, are, of, of, of a certain type of uh, demographic? Uh, is it your alter ego? What's, right. the, what's the rationale behind the, 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 um, the Russian uh, uh, it started comedian? Off, it started off as something very random. I, I Again, like I was experimenting with TikTok and I made this one video. It was the first video. It was like, hello, my name is Elena. And it just came. I did not write it. It was just random. Yeah. And I, I wasn't going to post it. I was going to like send it to a friend. And I posted it. And I forgot about it. And then I come back the next day. It's like 200,000 views and like thousands of comments. Wow. I'm like, oh, this is so funny, whatever, whatever. And every time I would try to divert from that and do something else because I like. And do people know that you're actually putting it on? Like you're deliberately you know, the emphasizing it? They don't. No, okay. they didn't. And then I kind of like saw the opportunity and I was like, ah, this is it. Yeah. I can abuse this. Yeah. <laughs> and people thought that I was genuinely, that that was my accent and, um, it was a trend at a time to make like sugar baby jokes. Yeah, yeah, it was yeah. a trend. I didn't yeah. start it. Um, and and I, I just jumped on that wagon and I started making these videos and people genuinely thought that's who I was. And yeah. I was like, well, if that's going to bring me the views, then I'm going to play along. Yeah. So I just, I kept going and kept yeah, going yeah. and kept going. And eventually the one thing that kind of slowed me down was the war. When the war started, I think a lot of Russian cr content creators got personally attacked. Um, and I stopped because I was getting attacked. Yeah. Um, and then I kind of had to come forward and be like, hey, by the way, this is my accent and my name is Denise and yeah. I have a job. And yeah. uh, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like I kind of, I didn't want to because a lot of people were like, oh, but like people would think that you are this true. Let them think that. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like it, it's funny. It's a how, how has the war impacted your comedy? If at all. Oh, it definitely has. Um, there is a clear change in engagement that I have on TikTok. I think I was like shadow banned for a while. Like my, my just my content wouldn't show up. Really? And if it would, I would get comments like, um, you're a terrorist or whatever. Wow. Tell your dictator. To, I'm like, I don't have him on speed dial. <laughs> like I'm not even a citizen. I've never voted for him, you yeah. know? Um, but I understood the frustration and that's why I think it's, I think having had so much experience with bullying, you kind of become like, yeah. In fact, you're, you're ready made to be on social media because you're going to yeah. get negative comments. You're going to get really accusations. Yeah. So if you've got that sort of thick skin mm. and you've developed it from a young age, then you're in a good position. Um, yeah. It's tough, though. The pressure of being on TikTok daily or updates all the time, mm -hmm. coming up with better and better mm -hmm. content. Talk to me a little bit about the pressure that you must feel doing that, if at all. Maybe you don't. Oh, no, 
there is. Um, I'm definitely feeling it this year. I took a break when I, I traveled home um, when I decided to let go of the agency. And I was like, you know what? This needs a break. I can come back to entrepreneurship later. Yeah. And I took a break from everything for about three months. And uh, coming back and posting again, it was like study from zero. Yeah. It was almost like it didn't matter that I have 500,000 followers. I was getting 200 views. Yeah. You know what I mean? And it was like, that's it. The algorithm has forgotten about me. And in yeah. trying to get back on that, like you said, the pressure of coming up. And with comedy, if you put any sort of artistic work under pressure or give it deadlines, yeah. It's not going to happen. It's inauthentic. It's fake. Yeah. It's not yourself. Yeah. And people will see mm. straight through that. The, and they did. But it's tough. I mean, just every day thinking, right, I, what can I put out there? Mm -hmm. You know, like how do you, how do you process that each morning? Do you have something in your mind, right, today I know exactly what I'm going to do? Or do you see something, you get inspired by something and before you know it, you know, you're posting a piece of content. I try being strategic about it because that's the marketing side of me because that's what I would do for my clients. Yeah. And I would be strategic and I'd be like, okay, Saturday from... 10 a.m. till 12 p.m. I'm gonna write scripts, and then yeah. on Sunday I'm gonna film for three hours. It does not write. Yeah. It's just you're a cre I have a creative mind, and this yeah. is something that is so personal for me that I cannot strategize yeah. it. You know. Yeah. So what happens is just life. Yeah. I just see something funny, or someone will send me a meme. I'm like, oh, I can turn this into a video. Yeah. Or I have an interaction with somebody, and I'm like, oh, hold that thought, and I open my notes apps, and then I just start writing yeah. like the idea, and yeah. it comes back to me. Um, and whenever I have the time to shoot, I shoot it. And some of my most famous videos, we're talking about 14 million views, was me with like not brushing my hair, in bed, with my pajamas on, eating chips, and be like, oh, that would be a funny video. And I just feel like, hello, blah, blah. And then it, it blows up. And then yeah. when I do something with the right angle in the lighting, it, it flops. Yeah, it's crazy. Mm -hmm. Like the more professional sometimes you try and do something, the worse it can be. Uh, okay, talk a little bit about marketing. Obviously, I work mm -hmm. in marketing as well. Uh, favorite brand? Do you have one? Right now, I must say Duolingo. Okay. Why? Yeah, Why? I love their marketing. They're so smart. They understand their target audience. If you see how they are on TikTok yeah. with the mascot, it's, it's not just what they're putting out. It's how they're interacting with the community. It's like every funny viral video, there's Duolingo leaving a message and other people interacting with them and they speak Gen Z language. Very nice. Love them. Do you identify with Gen Z people? Because I, 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 I struggle. I try to all the time, by the way. <laughs> it's not easy, right? It's not easy. I mean, I'm at the upper levels of a millennial. Right? Yeah. I'm, on, I'm on the cusp um, very, very senior level millennial. So it's quite challenging for me to sort of relate to the Gen Z audience. How do you find that? Because I'm you're somewhere in between, right? A I'm, I'm still very much a millennial, but I'm a bit upset that they think we're old. Like yeah. I took that very personally. Yeah. It's like, oh, that's such a millennial thing to do. Yeah, yeah. And I remember like, what, five years ago, the millennials were like, yeah. the older, all the news articles were like, oh, millennials are so entitled and in the workforce and whatever, whatever. And now we're finally in the managerial positions because yeah. like, there's, you know, all these years have passed. And then, uh, and then the Gen Z are looking at us like, we're old. Yeah. I'm not. Look, to be fair, <laughs> when I was 20, I used to see 40 year olds and I thought, wow, yeah. 40, it's really old. 30. But then when you, but when I you used get, to look at 30 year olds uh, and be like, mm. yeah. Anyway, <laughs> when you get to 40, when you get to my age, it's like, okay, hold on a second. I don't feel old. Mm -hmm. I still feel like I did pretty much when I was in my 20s. But yet, people, the way they see you, the Gen Z audience, yeah. they see you very differently. Um, it's tough. I'm, what I'm finding it harder and harder to understand is um, the relatability on certain topics, mm -hmm. right? Um, social media, as one example. My viewpoint on social media as someone who's in their 40s might be very different than someone in their 30s, which yeah. would be totally different from someone in their 20s. Um, I get worried a lot about people and how they use social and the impact it can make on, on people's lives especially teenagers, mm -hmm. especially people mm -hmm. who are at school. You don't have that many fo many followers. You can get bullied because you have a very small follower base yeah. or, or fan base. Um, I get very worried about it. But there are people who are Gen Z audiences that don't feel that that's such a big deal. So my worry is it's about as we progress in our lives, will that gap that we have between us and the, the generations beneath us, will that actually grow? What do you think? Um, I don't think so. I think... Look at millennials using technology and social media versus Gen X versus boomers, right? We're getting closer to the gap. Instead of growing apart between generations, I think we're getting closer. Um, obviously, there's all the fun jokes that they're, all, they're gonna stay. The, the generations are constantly yeah. going to throw shots at each other. Yeah. But I think Gen Z versus Gen Alpha, is that who's coming next, mm, I think so. right? They're gonna be so much closer because they're, they're chronically online. Yeah. 
You know what I mean? Yeah. And they have a better understanding of technology. Correct. And I think that might actually bring them closer than it brought us in our, our generation. Right, so you're a comedian, right? Yeah. Or comedian, as they say, mm. the, the female version. Yeah. Um, what makes a good, what, what makes someone funny? What do you think makes someone funny? I think there is, um, there's different types of humor. So you can't, there's some people that are just funny to everyone. But even if you look like some of my idols, like um, Kevin Hart, because I keep bringing him up because he's the self-deprecating humor that took yeah. me out of my bullying days, you know? And I was like, oh, that works. Um, he's not He's not funny to everyone. Yeah. I think he's one of the funniest people. Yeah. Dave Chappelle, one of the funniest people, you know? Yeah. So you can't be everybody's type of humor. Um, there's too many different types of humor. There is dry, there is that jokes, there is sarcasm, there is dark humor. And it's just finding that niche that represents you. And uh, and then, uh, I don't know, tell a joke and see if somebody laughs. I, I, <laughs> I have this feeling that, well, I, I've sensed it for quite some time. If you're a comedian, mm -hmm. you tend to be on the smarter side when it comes to the intellect. I feel uh, comedians are extremely smart individuals that they can, they can find something, they can pivot very, very mm -hmm. quickly. Um, and the ability to make people laugh, it's, 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 it takes a lot of intelligence to yeah. be able to do that. Uh, do you agree? I agree, and I would like to add that it's also a little bit of trauma. I don't think there is one successful comedian who has had a perfect childhood yeah. or hasn't had some sort of... Like, I remember talking to... Um, we have a small stand-up comedy um, culture in Dubai that's building up. And I remember like going to one of the shows and talking to some of the comedians. And I was like, this one thing that everybody has in common is like, oh, what got you into comedy? Well, my parents got divorced. Oh, yeah, that makes sense. What about yeah. you? It's like, oh, I got bullied. I'm like, oh, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And it's that beautiful way of taking something painful. Yeah. And it's art. Yeah. Because I look at stand-up com comedy in general as art. You could have made it into music. You could have made it into um, sculpting or whatever it is. It's an outlet. Yeah. But it's Very a true. cool outlet. Very true. Um, do you have a favorite comedian or is it Kevin Hart? Kevin Hart or Dave Chappelle right now. Okay. Um, Amy Schumer, lover. Okay. Um, probably I have a crack. On your, point, on, on your point of um, trauma, I think it's really insightful. When you mm. say all good comedians have a little bit of trauma. Mm -hmm. Do you think it's just comedians? Don't you think we all have a little bit of trauma somewhere? Does anyone have a perfect childhood, really? Does that exist? I would like to believe yes. I, I've met people with very very healthy like yeah. upbringings and they're just like all love and light and Rainbows, so annoying the perfect unicorns. little lives <laughs> like get out of here uh so for sure there, there are they yeah. exist um and i like to believe that they will keep to continue to exist as generations learn more about psychology and children's yeah. psychology we tend to raise our children very differently um but there is trauma is a word that is just so wildly used by everybody. And uh, and it's very subjective because yeah. my trauma is different from yours. But um, it, it, it could be less than yours, but it could have impacted me more. Yeah. You know, so I, w I would say that what you decide to do with it. So just to go back, does everybody have a little bit of it? Yes, for sure. Yeah. Different levels. And it's also what you decide to do with it. Because yeah. you could be a, a programmer who, all, again, use some sort of like past pain to fuel yeah. what they're doing in a different way but artists for sure artists are challenged people <laughs> that overcame those challenges Very and found nice. an outlet yeah <laughs> right we're gonna do but we're gonna have a bit of fun right mm -hmm. we're gonna we'll do a bit of improv yeah You've done improv before uh never been on a stage try to improvise off other people Is that right no no okay. no not in that sense it's great fun you okay. should do it really yeah. recommend it um i have a little bag of balls here mm -hmm. and in my bag of balls <laughs> Are certain the topics. Seven, the seven grader in me is yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's yeah. a bag of balls. Certain <laughs> topics, right? Uh, yeah. You haven't seen anything in here, right? Okay. You have no idea what's coming. I have no idea. Right, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to throw this to you. Yeah. Pick a ball and we'll talk about it. There we go. All right. Can I look first or it has no, to be? No, like just do the old, uh, you know. Do I read it? Well, yeah, absolutely. What does it say? How much truth behind a comedy? Okay. Ooh. So pretty self-explanatory, but everyone says when you make a joke, there's always a bit of truth. Oh, yeah. So talk to me about your truth <laughs> and your comedy. Yes. Yes, with pleasure. Um, I'm a bit of an activist myself. Okay. Uh, <laughs> um, and I think there were a lot of societal issues, and I, and I wanted to talk about them without sounding bitter. You know, I feel as women, when we tend to complain, it's like, oh, she's just so bitter. You can be better, be How yourself, yeah. whatever you want to say. 
It's your But floor I was is like, yours. how do I bring those societal issues that I think we should do better about, especially in terms of women, but men as well, because men don't have it that easy. I mean, it's, you know, when I'm saying like, I'm trying to protect women, it's not like men aren't challenged. Um, and I was like, how do I get people's attention? And there is, um, there's two ways that, 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 that I do this is controversy through my comedy. So you take a, an, an issue that exists. Such as? And, and you just make it exaggerated. Give me, give me an example. <laughs> I, uh, I recently made a skit where uh, it's, it's called How to Be the Perfect Woman for an Alpha Man. Okay. Horse, written by alpha men. <laughs> and this is, you know, the podcast that exists. And I think some of them are great. Men should be having conversations yeah. about how to be a better man. You know, I just don't think these conversations should make women look inferior to them. Yeah. Or, and I think a lot of people know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Um, I think my wife would know what you're talking about. Yeah. <laughs> and and, and it, it just, I've listened to them. And it's as much as I want to support that, because I'm all about like getting in touch with your feminine, masculine energy, whatever it is. It shouldn't be done at the expense of somebody else, which is right. it shouldn't be done at the expense of women. 100%. You know? So I took that and I twisted it around. And like people who got it, got it. And people who didn't got upset. Um, which I don't have a problem with because when you get upset, you get in fights in my comments and that boosts my engagement and I make money off of it. Yeah. But um, I, I did that and then I started saying these little things that kind of pinch a little bit. But because it has humor and because I do hashtag sarcasm, I'm kind of saving yeah. my there's, back there's a little a, there's bit. There's that get out of jail card that you've got. Mm. So like, oh, she's so funny. But if you think about it, yeah, there's a little bit of a real issue. You know what I mean? Like why, why is it that masculinity has to be aggressive? So percentage wise, right? Every joke they make, what percentage of the jokes that you have are, are based on a truth that you want to get out, reveal? 40, 50%. Oh, wow. I mean, uh, the inspiration is a real issue. Yeah. And then the delivery comes out in an exaggerated, funny, okay. sarcastic You might need way. to use your safe word. Have you used any of the comedy around the war that's happening? No. Okay. That was the one time. I even took a break and yeah. I had to think for myself. And I was like, I don't want... I have a lot of Ukrainian friends. Yeah. I, I don't, this is not something for me to monetize yeah. and use it for my own advantage. Very yeah. admirable. Uh, ready for the next ball? Yes. All right. Do you like, do you like my yes. bag of balls? It's very, uh, very cool concept. Yeah. <laughs> Hashtag right. don't steal it. <laughs> oh, there's two. And there's, there's more than two. They might be stuck together though. We have to increase our budget for next season. Clickbait or comedy with meaning. Uh, it's a combination of both. I no clickbait you know what i mean I, i'm a marketeer yeah i know all about clickbait you know the system you know how uh -huh. it works you know how to manipulate a little bit um a lot of it is clickbait a lot of it is exaggeration um but at the same time i want my followers to have a laugh i want them to yeah. have a good time i want them to think that's funny and then share it and relate to it because a lot of what i do is oh my god this happened to me too oh my god girl yeah, yeah. you read my mind like yeah. i like that yeah. i love that connection that i have um but I wouldn't use the word clickbait. I think what I do is controversy. I use controversy to spark some sort of emotion, yeah. be it anger or passion. Yeah. And then, then you relate back to I mean, to there's me. a commercial benefit, right, to yeah. this. The more controversy you stoke, the better for you. Yeah. But at the same time, do you want to be, you know, do you want to have, as a comedian, do you want to have original kind of thinking and thoughts that are not commercially driven, but actually more about the hidden messages and truth that you want to get out there. So it's that balance between mm -hmm. driving it's a bit commercial of benefit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So where do you stand on that? I think um, recently I've been experimenting a lot with my kind of comedy, you know, because you can do, you can find something that works and do it a million times um, and keep doing it because that's what a lot of people do. Yeah. Or you can realize that trends are changing and people get tired. Okay. It's the same repetitive thing. So now I'm like in my experimenting phase where I'm trying to put something that's original and that's more authentically me. Yeah. And then when that doesn't work, I do a clickbait video. Yeah. You know ha what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Have you ever just going back to just going back to the, the your alter ego, mm -hmm. like the Russian, uh, mm -hmm. the Russian lady? Have you done other accents or other yeah. types of nationalities? I mean, just always think about Borat in uh, in, in the UK. That's my inspiration. Right, Ali G and all the other different characters that Very you Very nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> there was Bruno as well. There was a, yeah. There was, yeah, yeah, Bruno. Yeah, what was he, Aus Austrian, German? I think it was Austrian fashion yeah. designer, yeah. I think, something along those lines. Yeah. Um, so do you have more characters in your head that you kind of want to roll out over the next you know, yes. few months, years? I did it even before. I have Emma, who's English, and Emily, who's this like super California girl, like, oh my God. And, and I, I started introducing them. Actually, I made a video when all the Russian creators were kind of getting yeah. taxed online, yeah. you know? 
Uh, and I made a skit where I was like the producer of Elena and I was like, what should, and then there's all these different characters. There's Emma, there's Emily, there's Elena. Yeah. And then there was like, uh, every now and then there's like a little bit of a French, uh, French yeah. girl. So yeah, I do like experimenting with the different characters. It's just Elena has this success. People like her. Every time yeah. I try to do a different character, like, no, we don't want to see okay, this. Okay, for the next ball, we're going to mm -hmm. answer it in Elena. Elena. Yeah? How do we feel about that? She has a very different demeanor, so I have to like really yeah, get you, into the you, feeling. You do you do Elena? You do it. How do you spell Elena? Is it with an A start or with an E? E L E L E N. Okay. Double L. The. Be yourself. <laughs> or play others. <laughs> you could not have done that better. Look at that. Listen, huh? I am always myself, but you have to understand that myself is also twenty different people. They're fighting inside. Okay. So to answer your question, yes and yes. I what are the chances of all the balls that you're going to pick? <laughs> you pick that one on, on that accident. I love that. So being your... Okay, you've got to continue because you haven't finished yes. yet. Um, which character do you enjoy playing more? Elena. Why? She is the woman that I never had the courage to be publicly. She is just... Doesn't give an F. Okay. You know? A and why, why do you have to be her and you can't be you to do that? Because... The real person behind this character is also a nerd. She's so annoying. She's always studying, always learning. She wants to be recognized for her brain. She wants to be recognized for her actual uh, uh, career uh, development. She doesn't, you know what I mean? And if she acts like Elena, which is a very big part of her, because she is sarcastic and she doesn't like people, she's afraid that it might take away from her brain, from her real realization. Right. Yeah, okay. which I don't agree with, but it's okay. Is uh, either the married? Yet. Okay. No, we don't have time for that. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Do you want to chuck me the bag? I love the answer. <laughs> chuck it to me. My turn. Try to throw over. Throw, the, throw oh. the bag over. We have to be equality over here. Come on. Okay. I don't believe in that either. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So the question here is great marketeer or great comedian? So in your, when you're looking back on your career, mm. um, there are some marketeers who believe they can change the world with a piece of advertising. They generally believe that, and it has happened. There are instances where it's happened. Um, there are some comedians that, or comedians that bring out important issues that could potentially also change the world. So what does your legacy, what would your legacy look like? What do you want it to look like? I like the idea of combining both. Yeah, you can't combine both on this show. You've got to I pick know. a side. You've got to pick a side. I will probably, look, comedy is definitely a passion. It's something that, it's my emotional side. Yeah. You know, that comes out. Where, whereas with, with marketing, I take pride in what I do. I take pride in learning and, and creating strategies and implementing them. And I really think that marketing has the power to change so many things. That's the power to influence. I mean, marketing is used in elections all over the world. Yeah. So it literally influences people. Yeah. So I will go with marketeer because okay. I think until the day I die, I'll be reading psychology of yeah. how to, you know, understand people's minds and yeah. yeah. Um, very good. Uh, on marketing itself specifically, do you, do you think marketing is the same as it once was? Do you, do you feel, you're nodding your head, tell me, what, explain. No, what, 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 what do you think? constantly developing, okay. I think. Well, obviously, um, I've only been doing marketing for a bit short of 10 years. Yeah. So I can relate to this period that I was able to to observe. Obviously, through my studies, I understand what marketing was like before. I mean, yeah. they, they, they convinced people that cigarettes were healthy, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? The role, the role of them is like what the question I was going to go is going down is more about the role and the influence that mm -hmm. marketing has within companies. Before in the old days, mm -hmm. historically, you know, the four Ps of the marketing or the seven Ps, whatever, um, the marketeer could control all of them. They were, they were running. They were running that. Uh, what we're seeing more and more is actually there's more focus just on the advertising, the promotional side the, the, of the four Ps. Um, and unfortunately, decision making has been made outside of the CMO, outside of the marketing department, but more made more by the business leaders or the financial leaders within the company. So do you, have you seen any changes yourself in the impact or the role of marketing in society versus how it used to be potentially in the past? Again, um, given just my limited experience, because... I like to stay humble. Um, I haven't been doing like I haven't been doing it for twenty years for me to say you know I haven't been working with ten different companies. Um, I would like to think that marketeers have more influence now in the company. Okay, interesting. You know because 
I would love that to be the case, by the way. 100%. Yeah. I would love that to be the case. And maybe I'm just lucky because I've worked in companies and with people where I was just given so much freedom. And I would I would have the freedom to just go up to this director of sales and be like, look, yeah. this will work. Do you want leads? Yeah, just yeah. listen to me. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so maybe that's my personal experience, understanding how marketing changes in, in, in the business industry or whatever industry. Um, because people are more media literate nowadays. People can understand branding. My grandmother didn't understand branding. She just bought the oil that was in the store. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. But my mom knows branding, yeah. and so do I, and my children yeah. will probably know it even better. Um, so because we're more aware of marketing and its techniques and branding, and we have council culture, I think marketing is slowly becoming some of the most important departments. In Music to my ears. Music to my ears. Yeah. I hope that's the case <laughs> in all organizations. Right, time for another ball, shall yes. we? Yes. Okay, I think we've got two, three more left. And then I want to move on to something else. Okay, what do we got here? This is influencer responsibility mm. or viewer discretion. So when you're creating a piece of content, um, is it do you have a responsibility as the influencer mm -hmm. in terms of the type of content or do you leave it up to the person on the end mm -hmm. who is uh, you know, either watching it or hearing it to use their discretion on whether they listen or not? Very controversial. Why? Coming back to you. It's because kind of dib and dabble back and forth between the two. I do believe that you should have influencer responsibility. Um, part of me just wants to be like, man, it's up to you how you interpret it. You know, I put it out there. I always save my back by putting hashtag sarcasm all my videos have that or satire, you know, so that you don't think that what I'm saying is real. I don't want you to think that I'm actually encouraging you to get a sugar daddy. But we just found out that 50% of your jokes are <laughs> 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 yeah, well, the 50, look, the truth now, just to uh, digress a little bit from the, from the story, the 50% of the truth in my videos is not that I'm a sugar baby looking for a sugar daddy. Yeah. It's that I was bullied based on the fact that I am Eastern European. Yeah. And the stereotype was that Eastern Europeans are easy women. And that hurt me. Yeah. You know, when I was 15 years old, you don't say that to a 15 year old, yeah. you know, who's never kissed a boy. Like, so being called these degenerate names simply yeah. because of my background and my accent and my last name. It sucks. It angered it me. Yeah. So then later on when I discovered this side, I was like, you know what? You want a stereotype? Yeah. Let's do the stereotype. Let's yeah. see how ridiculous these stereotypes are. And you're just going to rub it back in their face. Yeah. And you're going to slap them around a few yeah. more times. But there and was it a feels good, right? It does feel it good. Feels good. It's it almost like it's, like it's like revenge, but in a really mm. nice, controlled, but also very smart yeah. manner. It's like you thought this was going to destroy me. Yeah. Yeah, it's look at me building. use it. It's actually building Thank my you. career. Yeah, yeah. yeah, so there is a bit of um, influencer responsibility that's always at the back of my mind. And I always kind of like, even in the comments, I'd be like, oh, come on, it's a joke. Oh, come on, yeah. just like, man, for real, like you're, you're really getting pissed off over this. Yeah. Um, but then, and then there's another side of me that's like, you know what, if you really like, if that's what, if you think you should follow what random influencers on TikTok are telling you to do, then maybe that's just natural selection yeah. doing its thing, yeah. you know? Um, I do think it's important when addressing children. I do think it's important when addressing young teenagers and young adults. What age? What, what's your cutoff? I've talked on other ep episodes about uh, social gating. Yeah. So, you know, when you want to buy alcohol, you have to be a certain mm -hmm. age, go to mm -hmm. a nightclub, certain age. To use social media, should you be a certain age? Um, yeah. Oh, absolutely. I would hate for my followers to be 13 or 14. These are not jokes for 14 year olds. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, I cater to a more mature, older audience. Yeah. Uh, and I would love for it to continue to, to be that. So, when I go live where I try to like connect with the audience. I'm always kind of asking people like, oh, where are you from? Oh, I'm in high school. I'm like, oh man, you should stay in school and not watch my videos. Yeah. Uh, like I try to do that. Um, yeah. But yeah, there there has to be a healthy balance. I mean, there is, you shouldn't censor yourself so much because you're thinking how will the society interpret this yeah. and whatever, but you should have a certain level of influencer responsibility. Okay, so break it all down. You've got one message you want to say, and you can look at this camera over to my shoulder. One message that you want to say to you know, your followers, your mm -hmm. fan base, especially on TikTok, mm. um, behind all of the facade, all of the jokes, what's the real message that you want to tell them? The real message? <laughs> okay. Um, just be a good person. Really. I mean, it's all fun and jokes and be easygoing, but just at your core, just be a good person. If and 
if we just try, yeah. you know, like yeah. there's this is a sentimental part of me. If we just try to be a yeah. bit nicer to each other. If everyone did that, right? Mm. Everyone did 5%. They, did, they tried harder to yeah. be 5% a little bit nicer. The world would be such a much better place. Yeah. So you've obviously, your mum was a big role model for you yeah. growing up. Um, can I ask what's your mum doing at the moment? She has just quit her job and mm. retired. She's remarried and her husband um, got this great job and they're moving to a new country and she's kind of in the middle of discovering like, am I ready to stop working or do I want to do something yeah. else? She's happy? Yeah, very. Yeah. She deserves it, finally, yeah. you know? And how does she feel about your career so far? Oh, she loves it. She's my biggest supporter. She comments yeah. on everything. Does she? She's, yeah. She's always she's on social media. I have a young mom, you know? She's very hip. Uh, so she's always commenting. And sometimes she gets in arguments with my followers on TikTok. And I have to be like, mom, do not fight with them. It's okay. It's like, yeah, yeah, but he said something very <laughs> nasty. I'm like, it doesn't matter. It doesn't I mean, bother the, the me. More, the more famous you get, I think yeah. your mom would have a lot of fights on her hands. She does. <laughs> she does. Yeah. Um, I like, I like yeah, that. she's great. So what comes next for you? Either career or in the personal life? What, what comes next? Whatever the universe throws at me, really. Um, being a journalist, I think I'm just so open to anything. Any door, any door that I say that is worth knocking on, I'll yeah. knock on it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, I'm doing castings left and right. I'm doing little gigs here and there. Yeah. Uh, I'm working. I'm working in this company because I really see that I could, you know, climb that social that the uh, corporate ladder yeah. and and make myself up there. So, um, I think after COVID, I stopped planning. After I lost my company, I stopped planning. And yeah, that's I, right. You set up your own agency. Yeah. Yeah, for during two COVID. years. Yeah, during COVID. Wow. It was such a learning experience. Um, and after that, I was like, you know what? Maybe I should just let life kind of happen and say yes to things that feel good. And that's kind of where I'm at right now. It's a pretty good philosophy to have. Yeah. yeah. Look, you, you work in a tough industry, mm -hmm. right? And and to be funny is, is a pressure in itself. Yeah. To also work in marketing and have a full-time job is also quite tough. Um. What do you think is the insight within your industry, within comedy? Or what do you think for you, what do you think matters or what people should know most about you? Like, What is your own insight? What would you like to share with people? About me? Hmm. Uh, I think I, I really would love to make a change in the world, you know? And I feel like a lot of people, when, especially the younger we are, the more we think that we can change the world and you get older and then you're faced with reality and then your hope just kind of slowly dies. But I, I have faith in in this generation and i would love to be an active participant in just shaping a better a better new generation a safer world uh, like i said i really deeply support um even feminism i'm a bit like when i say feminism people just think i'm, I'm an angry man hating person but i really want to be an active participant in a society that is more open to psychology it's more open to therapy, it's more open to partnership, uh, just removing patriarchy, removing crazy feminism ideas, you know, the extreme. Yeah. Yeah. And I would love to, before I leave this earth, I would love to know that I could have done something to encourage partnership between genders, between classes, between just partnership, just working together. Yeah, really nice. Yeah. And in your industry, do you think for someone who's young, they want to become mm. a comedian, what kind of... You know, what advice would you give this young person uh, who wants to get into the world of comedy or who wants to become an influencer on TikTok? Don't be afraid share? to fail. Keep failing, actually. Fail over and over and over again. And then eventually you become kind of immune to it. And um, um, don't focus on the result. It's so difficult to say that, right? Because everybody wants yeah. the results. Just yeah. enjoy the journey with no expectations. Yeah. Yeah, and just do what feels right. It's very easy to say, right? But it's so easy. I mean, I don't believe tough. it it's tough. myself, you know. It's, it's, but it's tough. But you're absolutely right. And that's mm. the truth. Look, you've obviously had a hell of a story. Um, you're still very, very young. Yeah, I am. So just to contextualize it, <laughs> you have, uh, you know, there's, your comedy is going to mature. It's going to develop. Mm. Your marketing career is going to grow and develop. But uh, based on your track record, based on what you've already achieved so far, I have zero doubt that you're going to have an amazing, amazing career in which any direction you want to take it. Um, I think the fact that you've had to, you know, go through so much at a young age um, mm. has helped obviously form and shape you. But yeah. you've then not allowed that to impact your life, but you've allowed it to positively reinforce and guide you and direct you to things that you want to do. So yeah. you've used it, you've used all that bad stuff to actually help mm -hmm. fuel your, your career growth. And it's amazing, really. It's fantastic. Thank, Thank you. Thank you so much for being 
with this me. This was so fun. I'm, 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 I like this. Uh, I didn't know what to expect. Next time you have to come back at Christmas because, and <laughs> <laughs> but don't bring a Christmas mug. You have to bring something else. Yeah, I'll have another mug. All right, but look, it's been a pleasure having you on the show. Thank you so pleasure much. Pleasure to be here. And I'll see you soon, no doubt. Yes, All thank right? you. Take care. Bye.